Buongiorno. It is I. I am back with a video about my past, my future, am I my masculine and all that stuff. I asked you to leave me anonymous questions on my Instagram about, no, not questions, assumptions, okay? My coffee, I'm gonna have it, sorry guys. Um, and we're gonna go through it because I think it's time we get to know each other since a lot of you here are new. Um, later this week is gonna be a video about confidence, attachment, and all that good stuff. But this video is a little assumptions about me. You used to be a wild party girl. Listen, wild is a subjective, objective, is an objective thing. I didn't used to be a wild party girl, but I was definitely a party girl. I was in London. I love a good party. I um, loved to be out. I, I love to party. Right now, I couldn't think of anything worse than a party. Like, leave me alone. I just want to drink coffee and wine at home. I assume you never cry in front of your man. Do you know how much he would love for that to be true? Do you know how much he would love for that to be true? I think the true essence of being in your feminine is being in touch with your emotions and I cry in front of my man. What I don't do is cry in front of other people. I am, um, yeah, I find it really hard to cry in front of other people for sure. He would probably want me to stop crying in front of him if he had the choice. You never raise your voice. You know what? I used to raise my voice all of the time in my past relationships and all that stuff since growing up and learning more about just handling yourself with like real power is speaking in your authority without yelling like you don't need to yell at anyone and especially now i have a son i don't like yelling around children that is just terrifying um children get very scared if you yell so there's none of that you've never had a purely platonic male friend i don't know that's just what i actually think about you but i just wanted to know why you think male and female friendships are cannot be platonic i've mentioned before that i don't think male and female friendships can be platonic because i don't believe in male and female friendships like genuinely off the bat i don't necessarily believe in it because i believe in childhood friendships where you know someone you've grown up together you are now friends bob's your uncle it works i believe in universities you can become friends and all that stuff but i really don't believe that when i'm a grown adult in my marriage right now that i would be okay with and vice versa with my husband if i suddenly call and i say i met i met john at work john's a really nice guy him and i are gonna go for dinner why what's the business purpose oh no we just think we can be friends from 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 what area is that happening i i just don't see that happening i believe in family friends the groups of friends but intrinsically, I think that if somebody who is of the opposite sex is suddenly deciding to be your friend, especially from the male point of view, they probably have more in mind for you than that, honey. You've always had a strong feminine energy and haven't struggled too much with relationships, baby. <laughs> baby. I am... The reason I know so much about feminine energy is because I am the masculine energy queen. I grew up without a dad, with very strong women, grandma who worked my mum worked not that that's not feminine to work but as in like they made things happen um i didn't grow up with any father figures uncles or anyone and often that can have the opposite result in a woman and that is she's deeply in her masculine energy and because i was so in my masculine energy um i learned how difficult it is to constantly be in it whilst wanting to be in your feminine energy and be a woman the reason i learned about it the reason i know about it is because I was not about it. So it took me a while to learn. You don't give second chances. Uh, you're right, I don't give second chances. You are absolutely right, my friend. You've been through a lot, so that's why you give great advice. I think being through a lot is up to the person that's been through it. And I would say that comparatively to uh, many people, I have been through a lot. I'm, I grew up as a child of Im immigrants. I um came to a new country didn't speak the language um my family structure is a little bit you know everyone's divorced these days but you know what i mean i don't have a relationship with my father um just a lot of things in my childhood were very unstable and that's why i went so headfirst into learning and stability and finding out who i am and that's why i'm obsessed with the family unit and creating that i think that passion for that comes from knowing what it's like not to have it. Did you have your current attachment style in your current relationship? Um, anxious attachment style in your current relationship? I did. 
I was just healing from my anxious attachment style with my now current husband. It took me many, many years um, to just pivot. I think the, the, the key and the, and the whole notion of healing an attachment style is a lot of people think it can, can, cannot be done during a relationship, but actually it's best to do it during a relationship because you can see the reciprocation of the person who you are changing that behavior with. So when that, as that person changes, as you change your behavior from anxious to secure, you can see their reaction. You can see their more positive reinforced reaction to how you are changing and that encourages you to keep going. So when I met my husband, I was definitely anxious and I traveled towards secure attachment during our relationship. Your husband has an avoidant style and you sometimes wish he was more available. I wish he was more available. He is now a secure attachment. He tended towards avoidant when we met, but because he's quite an insular and self-motivated person, it doesn't come from trying to run away or anything like that, but he is very comfortable in his own company and who he is and what he wants to do. So naturally when we met, he didn't want to be engulfed and I didn't want to be abandoned, which is the two fears of the avoidant and the um, anxious. And as we grew together, we both became secure I used to want him to be more available, but now as we've healed, um, not that it was something to heal from, it's just, you know, you as we grew up, I'd say I am really happy with the availability that he gives me because he's constantly there for me and he's very secure in that, in that paradigm. People always think that you're not a nice person until they meet you. Yes, baby, this is my constant thing. People think I'm quite mean or whatever until they meet me. And then when they meet me, they think I'm funny and nice and everything. How do you feel seeing your close friends suffering from men? Um, it used to hurt me. I used to advise people. I used to try and do A, B, C, D, F, G. But the reality is that no relationship is ideal. I think if my friends were to tell you how I, I always like to kind of come from a place of humor about my relationship. So if I'm talking about it, it's almost to make my friends laugh. Um, nothing is perfect. It can't be. And I think everyone chooses the path that they want to be in. And if you've made a choice to be with a certain partner, then that's the choice you've made. And it's your journey. And I, I don't feel sad about their suffering. I just think it's part of their journey. Everyone ha everyone's happy to be around you in your energy, power and beauty. I wish, I hope so. I mean, isn't that the isn't that the aim of the game to make everyone around you kind of bask in your sunshine? That people have called you a gold digger before. Do you know what men love to call me a gold digger online? Um, it's almost humorous at this point because it couldn't be anything further. Um, if anything, the type of guys I used to go for had no potential. Um, I was very deeply heart-led and then, you know, I changed my mind and decided I'd rather meet someone with values um, and all those things. But I think digging for gold is so almost esoteric. Like, what does that even mean? Like, who, who is this gold? Where is this gold? If anything, I probably have a slight... Um, I tried to explain this to a friend of mine recently. I have a slight detachment from anything to do with kind of chasing someone for their um, assets or attributes because I just don't know how it can last. It has to be when your values meet, but men certainly like to hold, call me that online. You have a few breakdowns, but when you do, you have a strategy to cope with it. Uh, my strategy to cope with breakdowns is gratitude. I um, feel so in awe of life and so grateful for life that I just deploy gratitude when I've had breakdowns. I assume that you were financially secure before meeting your husband. That's a really interesting assumption. Um, I was 24 years old and I'd finished my university at 23 um, or 22. Uh, I was not financially secure. I had a good job, but I spent money on clothes and rent and everything that people do in their early 20s. Not all, some people are very, very good at money management, but I was not financially secure. However, I did work a job with a good salary. Um, so, but I was not financially secure. I was too young in my mind. You come from money. That's a big assumption. I do not come from money. I come from um, education. I would say everyone in my family has been educated, like engineers or, you know, um, my mom was a mechanical engineer um, by profession. My father was an um, electrical engineer. My granddad um, and my grandma also worked in the same industry. Um, so, 
everyone who is in my family is educated but I would not say they have money or had money growing up. My mum immigrated to England with me when I was a child and if anything she had to work in like Tetley's tea factory and a chicken shop in order to make ends meet so I never had any feeling of affluence growing up. You aren't sure if you want more children but would love to consider it out of love for your husband. I would consider it out of love for my husband. I would also consider it out of love for the family unit. I like to do things well if I do them. I'm also understanding of the fact that I'm in my 30s, uh, mid 30s, so if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. If it happens, it happens. Um, I'm still 50-50 on the, on, the, on the cause, but um, if it happens, it would be great. If it doesn't, it will be great. I'm happy to have one child, but if it doesn't, if it does or doesn't, I don't mean that it's an act action that we're taking. I just mean that if we decide to, great. If we don't decide to, great. I'm grateful for one child. And um, if we decide to have more, that's fantastic, but you have to be realistic. Your dream was to find a rich man and that's why you stayed with your husband. Those are two different questions and statements. Your dream was to find a rich man. My dream was not to find a rich man. My dream um, when I met him wasn't even to find a man. Um, because I, again, I, like I say, I was 24 and young, but I just wasn't thinking about settling down. But if I had to ask, if you had to ask me, do I want a rich man or a poor one? I would say a rich one because um, the problems of poverty are very, very hard to deal with and they can have impacts on your life overall. I, I grew up, as I said, with my mum making ends meet and it's not fun and it's not easy. Um, so would I want my partner to be rich? Sure, it makes life easier. Um, would I want them to be self-made? Yes, because it makes them hardworking. So it's all these questions, um, but it wasn't to find a rich man. And in fact, it was never to find like a billionaire or a millionaire because I, I don't feel connected to those people. I don't know those people in my life. So um, it was never even a thing I thought about. Um, that's why you stayed with your husband, uh, stayed with my husband. There was never a, a point where I even thought of leaving. So um, yeah, I'm not sure what that means. You have mastered how to act around men because your husband doesn't give you enough love to fulfill you. Um, I have mastered how to act around men because I didn't have men in my life. I didn't have fathers in my life or uncles in my life. And then I just learned a lot from starting to date and realizing that I don't really like, what is the trick? Like, what is, how do you be in your feminine and they be in your masculine and all this stuff? How do you make it work? Um, I just got fascinated with it. I think I also went to drama school where you research a lot into character and how to, how characters develop. And I just found femininity and masculinity really, really fascinating. I find progression in life fascinating. I think if you can master your femininity and you know how to talk to men, um, family life is one of the most interesting aspects to me. Like how do you cultivate a marriage? I just find it fascinating. Um, and it's not because of my current husband, it's probably to do with the second question, you have daddy issues. Absolutely. Me and my daddy issues are like that. I don't have them anymore. I know it's a weird thing to say, but I have no attachment to them anymore. But growing up, oh my God. Is your mom single? If so, does she meet people or is she happy being on her own? My mom is not single. She has a boyfriend. You have a healthy and good intimate life. Let's put it that way. So that YouTube doesn't flag it because you have defined blue and pink roles in your relationship. Yes. You've experienced everything you now preach. I have everything. You don't give a care about people's opinion on you. And I love that about you. I don't care about people's opinion on me. It's my superpower. I think it came from not even knowing what people say when I was a child and being an immigrant and I didn't even know what people were saying in a different language. So I, I, I detached from people's opinions. You've never had to worry about money, baby. Um, growing up when I was young, I had to have cereal without milk. So I worried about money a lot. And then I just thought, you know what? Money is my friend. I'm gonna make money. I'm going to be around money. Money's a tool. I like money. Let's have money. You know what I mean? Because not having it is not fun. Where do you want to be in five years? That's more of a question than an assumption. But um, I, I want to build my business and my family. And I want to be proud of it. You like spicy food? I do. I do like spicy food. You're an extrovert life for the party. I act like an extrovert, but I'm an introvert because the difference between an extrovert and an introvert is an extrovert recharges around people and an introvert recharges alone and I recharge alone. How tall are you? 170 centimeters, five foot seven. What do you think about climate change? Too difficult of a subject for me to start. That could be a whole video, but um, it, it's more complex than it sounds. You struggle with your self-esteem. I used to struggle with my self-esteem. 
I think it's natural growing up as a teenager to struggle with your self-esteem. If you don't, then it's a rare, you're rare if you don't. Um, I've, I've come out of it. I think a lot of people enjoy their 30s because they don't struggle with their self-esteem anymore. I now struggle with my self-esteem if I act badly towards someone or if I don't perform well. It's based on things that I wish I did differently. Whilst when I was younger, I just struggled because my nose from my side looked long, like stupid. Not stupid, it's real, but it's not what life's about. Let's leave it here with, is your personality or looks more important to you? My personality is more important to me now because I realized it's my strength. I used to, I did Miss Universe. I cared about my looks so much and I'm not the prettiest in the world, nor am I the best personality in the world, but my personality is so mine um, and it's so cultivated by me um, that, um, you know, I can stand by it. I didn't make my looks, my mum did, you know, and, um, but I will say that um, my looks also is a cultivated thing. I believe it's about self-manufacturing, like you can do what you want to do. I believe you can be who you want to be. And I believe that you, if you have a mind's eye of what you want to look like, you can achieve it. Um, and that's that. But my personality is more important because I've worked on it. Anyway, guys, thanks for joining. And I'll see you this week later for a um, interesting video.